Hello, thank you for joining me today. We've been reading through A Course in Miracles, the main text, and today we're going to read chapter 25, The Justice of God. I think we'll read the introduction, and uh, which is section one, and probably the link to truth, which is section two. That'll probably be sufficient for today. Introduction to chapter 25, The Justice of God. The Christ in you inhabits not a body, yet he is in you, and thus it must be that you are not within a body. What is within you cannot be outside, and it is certain that you cannot be apart from what it is at the very center of your life. What gives you life cannot be housed in death. No more can you. Christ is within a frame of holiness whose only purpose is that he may be made manifest to those who know him not, that he may call to them to come to him and see him where they thought their bodies were. Then will their bodies melt away that they may frame his holiness in them. No one who carries Christ in him can fail to recognize him everywhere except in bodies. And as long as he believes he is in a body where he thinks he is, he cannot be. And so he carries him unknowingly and does not make himself manifest. And thus does he not recognize him where he is. The son of man is not the risen Christ, yet does the son of God abide exactly where he is and walks with him within his holiness, as plain to see as is his specialness set forth within his body. The body needs no healing, but the mind that thinks it is a body is sick indeed. And it is here that Christ sets forth the remedy. His purpose folds the body in his light, and fills it with the holiness that shines from him. And nothing that the body says or does, but makes him manifest. To those who know him, not it carries him in gentleness and love to heal their minds. Such is the mission that your brother has for you, and such it must be that your mission is for him. The Link to Truth, section two of chapter 25, The Justice of God. The Link to Truth. It cannot be that it is hard to do the task that Christ appointed you to do, since it is he who does it. And in the doing of it will you learn the body merely seems to be the means to do it. For the mind is his and so it must be yours. His holiness directs the body through the mind at one with him. And you are manifest unto your holy brother as he to you. Here is the meeting of the holy Christ unto himself, nor any differences perceived to stand between the aspects of his holiness, which meet and join and raise him to his father, whole and pure, and worthy of his everlasting love. How can you manifest the Christ in you except to look on holiness and see him there? Perception tells you, you are manifest in what you see. Behold the body, and you will believe that you are there. And every body that you look upon reminds you of yourself, your sinlessness, your evil, and above all, your death. And would you not despise the one who tells you this and seek his death instead? The message and the messenger are one, and you must see your brother as yourself. Framed in his body, you will see your sinfulness, wherein you stand condemned. Set in his holiness, the Christ in him proclaims himself as you. 
Perception is a choice of what you want yourself to be, the world you want to live in, and the state in which you think your mind will be content and satisfied. It chooses where you think your safety lies at your decision. It reveals you to yourself. Sorry, it reveals yourself to you as you would have you be. And always it is faithful to your purpose from which it never separates nor gives the slightest witness unto anything the purpose in your mind upholdeth not. Perception is a part of what is your purpose to behold, for means and end are never separate, and thus you learn what seems to have a part, a life apart has none. You are the means for God, not separate, nor with a life apart from his. His life is manifest in you, who are his son. Each aspect of himself is framed in holiness and perfect purity, in love celestial, and so complete, it wishes only that it may release all that it looks upon unto itself. Its radiance shines through each body that it looks upon, and brushes all its darkness into light merely by looking past it to the light. The veil is lifted, though its gentleness, and through its gentleness, and nothing hides the faith of Christ from its beholders. You and your brother stand before him now to let him draw aside the veil that seems to keep you separate and apart. Since you believe that you are separate, heaven presents itself to you as separate too. Not that it is in truth, but that the link that has been given you to join the truth may reach you through what you understand. Father and Son and Holy Spirit are one, as all your brothers join as one in truth. Christ and his Father never have been separate. And Christ abides within your understanding in the part of you that shares his Father's will. The Holy Spirit links the other part, the tiny mad desire to be separate, different, and special, to the Christ to make the oneness clear to what is really one. In this world, this is not understood, but can be taught. The Holy Spirit serves Christ's purpose in your mind so that the aim of specialness can be corrected where the error lies. Because his purpose still is one with both Father and the Son, he knows the will of God and, that, and what you really will. But this is understood by mind perceived as one, aware that it is one, and so experienced. It is the Holy Spirit's function to teach you how this oneness is experienced, what you must do that it can be experienced, and where you should go to do it. All this takes note of time and place as if they were discrete. For while you think that part of you is separate, the concept of a oneness joined as one is meaningless. It is apparent that a mind so split could never be the teacher of oneness which unites all things within itself. And so what is within this mind and does unite all things together must be its teacher. Yet must it use the language that this mind can understand in the condition in which it thinks it is. And it must use all learning to transfer illusions to the truth taking all false ideas of what you are and leading you beyond them to the truth that is beyond them. All this can very simply be reduced to this. What is the same cannot be different, and what is one cannot have separate parts. Oh, well... I think that last sentence really sums it up. I'm not sure I can do much better than that. What is the same cannot be different, and what is one 
cannot have separate parts. I was just reading earlier today uh, for a book club that I read for, uh, Neil Donald Walsh Book Club, Conversations with Cod Book Club. And um, in that reading, there was an analogy, or, uh, uh, not an analogy, a metaphor being used describing snow and snowflakes. Each snowflake is unique. And, and then as they fall and melt, they change form and they become one again with each other. And I'm not doing the, the I'm not doing the reading that I that I read much justice here, but think about it for a moment. If we are each one with one another, we are like snowflakes. We're each individual and unique in ourselves. But then, uh, as as we change form, let's say as we die, we change form. It is not unlike the melting of a snowflake changing form. And so um, the, these two sections here in this chapter were a lot of words to say really what is summed up here in this very last sentence. This is all one. We talk about God. We talk about the Holy Spirit. We talk about um, Jesus or Christ, we talk about ourselves, we talk about our minds, we talk about our spirits, we talk about our souls, we talk about our bodies, and everything is really one. Everything. They are not distinct separate things. We are not separate from each other, we are not separate from ourselves. And divinity and Christ. Yeshua, Jesus, whatever names you use, we are, we are all of that. I am all those things. You are all those things. Divinity is within you. Christ is within you. You have a body, but you are not that body. And you will sustain in nature beyond your body. What is the same cannot be different and what is one cannot have separate parts. Very, very, very critical message from these chapters, sections today. So I thank you for joining me. If you would like additional support, you can reach out to me. 907-351-3003. Um, you can text to that. Um, you can email or message me through my website, lindalamp.shop. And um, I hope to see you next week for uh, the next installment of chapter five. Thank you again for joining me today. Much love and namaste.